Today, we're going to explore the Lower East Side of Manhattan and focus on an important part of its history. We'll be taking you on a Jewish food tour at some iconic locations, from Bialy's to Bagel's and more. Let's get ready to nosh New York City style. Members of the Barrio, I am so pumped to create this video. Being Jewish myself, I really want to learn more about the Jewish history of the Lower East Side. And I've got two New York City experts who are going to take us through this tour. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hey, hey guys. guys! Hi, thanks for joining and thanks so much, Yubi Bar, for having us on your channel again. This first stop, Moisha's Bake Shop, which is a kosher bakery, is the oldest kosher Jewish bakery still in existence here in the Lower East Side. There used to be many more, but this is the only one left. Hudson, who's the, fam the famous Hudson who's smelling something. There we oh. go, there we go. <laughs> Oldest kosher bakery left in the Lower East Side. Sounds like a good place to start. Let's get in there, guys. I mean, I'm definitely going to get a loaf of rye bread because we used to get weekly from Moisha's uh, Bakery, which was a, their sister bake shop uh, in the East Village on 2nd Avenue. Sadly, it, it closed, but we used, I'm missing our rye bread because that's what we get every week. This is a little far a walk for us to get every week. So when we're here, we got to get it. So I'm definitely going to get the rye bread. And their hamantashens are amazing. I stopped when I was a little girl. Really? Yeah. Oh, now I'm, I got old here. You shouldn't work here. You get old. The reveal. Big reveal, the hamantaschen. I just have to say, this hamantaschen looks incredible. Growing up, I was used to eating a much smaller version of this, so this is just making me smile right now looking at it. I also got a black and white cookie in here for Adriana oh, you to gotta go show later. It. Oh, I gotta show it, of course. Let me. We won't eat it now, because Adriana would be very mad at us if we ate her black and white cookie. This is a really good New York City cookie here, for the record. Two, three. Mm -hmm. I just bit right into the apricot. First bite, heaven. Mm. Mine is still cookie. Mm hmm. Because I didn't get to the apricot yet, but even the cookie is so fresh, so delicious. You can see that they're made with love. I mean, you can see that they're hand done. These are all pinch by hand. There's no machine making these. This is for the holiday of Purim. It was named after Haman, who is the villain in the Torah in the Purim story. Oh. Remember well, that from Hebrew school. I'm saying this cookie is villainous. <laughs> <laughs> in an extra, extra good way. It's the rye bread. And it was freshly baked this morning. Four dollars for this whole entire loaf. And no preservatives, no additives. It's just super fresh, super delicious. Oh! Right. Stop number two, guys. We are in front of Kosar's. Now, many of you have heard about the bagel, the most famous Jewish food in New York City. But how many of you have heard of the Bialy? Because it was founded by Morris Kosar, who was from Bialystok, Poland. And in fact, the whole word Bialy is basically a shortened word from Bialystok, because that's where the Bialy originated. It's like a big Bialy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, can never, you show us that? We've never seen anything like that before. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah. We, we gotta get that. That is not a regular Bialy, folks. Yeah, and it comes with everything. That's an everything inside. Yeah, everything inside. All right, guys, we have got both the Bialy and the bagel in front of us. This bagel, by the way, is absolutely one of the largest bagels I've ever seen. It barely has a hole in the middle, but we're still gonna call it a bagel. Carla, can you talk more about the differences outside of the obvious in the middle? Right, besides their obvious appearance, because this Bialy has that depressed center full of the onions, because we got the onion Bialy. Um, the basic big difference is the ingredients. Like I said, Bialy, much, much simpler. Just flour, water, yeast, and salt. That's it, very simple. And then because you're adding the onions in the center, it's onions as well. But I mean, you can forego yeah. the onions and just do garlic or something like that. But the bagel 
has malt and sugar. So like when you taste it, you can taste like the sweetness even in a plain bagel, but not the Bialy. The Bialy to me, I would say like the dough itself is like the consistency and the taste of like pizza dough okay. if you didn't put sauce or cheese on it. If you just ate the pizza dough, you know, crust or something like that. Here right. we go. I haven't had this in a long time. Going in. Much thicker than a bagel. Completely tastes like pizza dough. I see that. You can feel it, right? And then mm -hmm. it's airy, but not like the big airiness that's in a in that's yeah. in a bagel. And you know, it's not it's not as high, obviously. It's I mean, de it's denser. Right, it is denser. De definitely, definitely. You know, the yeast is making it rise, but it doesn't have that extra added sugar, which I think makes the bagel rise exactly higher as well so because there's no sugar definitely in this one i gotta get to the onion part that was that's what i've been eyeing yes yes i i do too but i'm gonna have to go for a bigger bite than mm -hmm. this mm. Mm. oh you got to the onion mm. i ripped right to it look at this thing guys i would say the onion's a nice surprise in the middle i'm a fan of onions if you like onions you may like bialis more mm. than bagels but i will say that i grew up eating bagels all the time in New Jersey, and I'll still take a bagel over a Bialy, but if you're visiting New York and you want something very unique, an old school Bialy place like this, you are telling me is extremely hard to find. Stop number three. I've actually been to this place a really long time ago. We're gonna try some kosher pickles. And this is actually something that used to be everywhere in the Lower East Side, and now these are pretty much your only options in the area. So the people brought over what they knew how to do. They knew how to make pickles. It was an inexpensive item. And uh, it felt like home cooking. The home food snack. At that time, it was a nickel for a pickle. New pickle. See how green it is? Right, so that's kind of like the like closest it can be to a cucumber. Yes, it's only been pickled for one to 10 days. Wow. And after two weeks, It turns to a half sour pickle. You see how the color changes? It goes sort of yellow. And then the other pickle we saw, the sour pickles, those are three months old. And those are the most garlic and the most dill flavor. So we're going with the classic. We've been doing classics all day. Sour pickle, super sour, right? Full sour, this is. Full sour. Three weeks curing. Three weeks for this. Okay, let's, let's do it. Mmm. So much pickle juice, I would say, in it. Definitely so sour. So juicy, so sour. And you, you like, you heard that snap too when I bit into it, right? It's super crisp, like extra fresh, good. Really crunchy. Oh yeah. Yes. This is actually a very popular stop on the Jewish food tours. They have some on the Lower East Side. I took one a long time ago. I have been here before. I think the owner is a character. Definitely stop by this place. Yeah, like you said. It was five cents a pickle. Hey, hey, no, no, Hudson loves pickles too. And now only a dollar a pickle. So it's still a very affordable food. So you said a pickle for a nickel. A pickle for a nickel, that's it. Oh, Hudson, Hudson. Ready, catch. All right. Hudson too, deserves his own channel, I think. Not too sour, Hudson, what do you think? Hudson, what do you think? Stamp of approval? Yeah. yeah. As someone who's Jewish, I find the history of this neighborhood so fascinating. Many Jews who live in the United States can trace back their roots to the Lower East Side. At one point, there was one and a half million Jews living in this neighborhood. And in fact, between 1900 and 1910, there were more Jews in the Lower East Side than anywhere else in the world. Now it's not like that anymore, but the history, history remains. Russ and Daughters, we have covered them before. I like them so much, so I thought this video could not be complete without a stop to a very famous spot in the Lower East Side if you're a fan of bagels with locks. Back in the early 1900s, you know, stores were passed down from like father to son, father to son, never to the daughters. 
But the interesting story is Joel Russ, who founded Russ and Daughters. He had three beautiful daughters who worked in the store as teenagers. And he quickly realized that his store became the most popular appetizing store in the early 1900s because people would come in to flirt with his daughters. Like, the, you know, little matchmaking going on or whatever it was. And he's like, oh, my daughters are actually big assets to my business. Let me put them on the sign because before then it was called Joel Ross Cut Rape Appetizer. Every time I go to Russ and Daughters, I get the same thing of the classic. It's an everything bagel with scallion cream cheese, Nova Scotia salmon. It's just the traditional best choice, trust me. I'm sure you've had this just as many times or not, if not more than I've had this. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you don't grow tired of a Russ and Daughters smoked salmon, cream cheese, and everything bagel. I mean, who could ask for anything more? No. Okay, let's, let's go do it. for it. Let's do it. This is what mornings need to taste like. Even though it's the afternoon, this is what a morning in New York should start with. I agree, I have to have an extra bite. That's how good it is. Extra, extra good. They do their salmon better than anybody. Mm. Oh, wow. So it fresh. Is, it is. And I want to tell you another quick, funny story. Nikki Russ Fenneman, the fourth generation co-owner, told us that her father was never so happy. She actually was a lawyer before she started working at the, uh, at the shop. And she said that her father was more happy when she learned how to smoke, how to um, slice properly their smoked salmon, like slice it so thin that you could read through it, than when she you know, graduated from law school and got her bar degree. <laughs> that he was more proud of her for that smoked salmon cutting. So Priorities were in the right place. Exactly, exactly. All right, I want to thank James, Carla, and Hudson so much. <laughs> Check out their amazing channel, putting the link down below in the description. You two were incredible tour guides. Thanks so much. So good. Guys, thank you uh, so much for all your support, all the places we listed down below in the description. Until next time.